I am about to blow your mind. You see this image here that I took in Chicago with the beautiful skyline in the background. It's already dramatic, but with one click of a button in Luminar 4, look what I can change this to. <laughs> how is that how is that even like fair? That's insane that I can do that with a click of a button. So recently Luminar 4 reached out to me and they said, hey, they wanna sponsor a video on my channel so I can show my audience what this software can do. I gave it a shot and I literally was mind blown because I, I'm a portrait photographer, most of y'all know that, but I like specifically to take environmental portraits. I like to show the scene in an image, right? And a lot of the times our skies are boring. A lot of the skies are boring, especially when shooting natural light shots because you're exposing for your model. A lot of the skies usually turn bright white or they're just there, right? They're not, there's nothing special about the sky. So I figured maybe this could be useful in my workflow. All right, so now I'm gonna show you a little bit around Luminar 4, but first I wanna highlight the things that I'm really excited about, and that is the AI sky replacement. So this is another image from the same photo shoot. I, I'm i gonna use the same sky because I'm crazy. I, I think that sky looks insane, right? Crazy. A couple of details that I want you to notice. Look at how it identifies the railing, how, it ma how perfect the mask is here. Because you could probably do this in Photoshop, it'll probably take you like two hours I know it would take me at least two hours and it would be really bad. It just identifies, knows that this is a human being. It knows that that's a really, it, look at the way it handles the hair. Look at that. That's amazing. All I did was click a button. And to me, this looks amazing. Um, if let's say you're, the sky that you put into your image doesn't, it's not masking well, Luminar gives you a lot of different sliders here to use so that you can perfect the mask. So like, uh, look, the position, uh, horizon position. I can change the position of the sky and basically fine tune your sky here to fit the image perfectly. Now, one the thing that I would do with this image, look at this relight scene slider. Look at the, the look at the color of the buildings. They're kind of faded right now. When I hit this slider, you see what happens? They get darker, they get that burning sunset starts to kind of take over the image. Look at the before and after. Before and after this image looks like there's a burning sunset and it looks believable and that's so important for my people out there that are not into like injecting this crazy dramatic sky in your image but you want to add just subtle tweaks to an image to give it a little bit more pop right this is the perfect example for you here's the picture of deborah high noon sun i used a flash and you see here i got you know i got some blue sky there's no, there's no clouds, there's no anything, but watch the little bit of tweaks that I use using AI tools in Luminar 4 to make this image pop. Watch this. AI sky replacement, I'm going to choose a sky. And you gotta be very selective, right? Because obviously I'm not gonna add a sunset to this image. It doesn't look like a sunset, right? It looks cool, but it's not believable because look at the shadows that she's casting. The shadows go straight down. Look at the sharp shadows right over here on this corner. It's not believable. So what I'm gonna use is a bright blue sky. Okay, that's okay. I think, yeah, that's the one. That looks the, that looks like the sky that, that you have when you have high noon sun. So what I'm gonna do here, since the masking looks really, really good, especially around the building, I'm going to defocus the sky a little bit. Very important tool when using Luminar 4 because sometimes the sky is not always perfectly sharp, right? and she's really close up. I'm not shooting F16, it's obvious. So I'm gonna defocus the sky a little bit. Now it looks more believable when it's there. That's such a that's such a powerful slider, the sky defocus to make it more believable. Now I'm also gonna raise the sky temperature. I'm gonna make it a little bit warmer. Now I'm gonna show you another AI tool that I'm really excited about, right? And that is the, a the AI enhanced tool. So you could go into light, which is basically the general panel for like adjusting exposure, the contrast, the normal things that you would do to this image here, right? I would adjust the exposure on her a little bit, maybe add a little contrast, maybe add a little vibrance. The AI enhanced tool, which is right here, basically does all of that for you. Just moving that slider, watch this. I'm gonna move this slider and you're gonna see that the image just starts to come together. Right, she starts to become brighter. Contrast is added. The the colors start to become a little bit more vibrant. Watch this. Here's the before, and here's the after. <laughs> look, look at that. Look at the light on her. So basically, this slider 
just pretty much guessed everything that I would normally do to this image. It knows, it's just, it knows what this image needs and it's doing it for me. And that's literally the kind of edit that I would want. One thing I really like about Luminar 4 is that it, not only is it a standalone software, but it's also a plugin. So let's say I want to do skin retouching on Photoshop with this image. I can go to file, I can go to X or open in, and then open it in Photoshop or even open it up in Lightroom and vice versa. I can send these images back and forth to this program just for the sky, and then I can send it back to Photoshop for skin retouching. I love that because I already have my workflow. I don't want to have to use a standalone software that's different from Photoshop or Lightroom. I can use this as a plugin. So freaking good. Another image that I want to show you. So here's an image of Ivy Rundick, fellow YouTube photographer. And I'm going to add a sky into this image. This is dust, the sun setting. You can actually see a little bit of pink in the sky down here. And there, I know there's a sky that's very similar to this. I wouldn't add a blue sky to this. Wouldn't make much sense, right? This, it's not believable. What I'm going to do is add like a a dusk like yeah see that look at the look at the sky before and look at that see that's believable actually it's not because it's too in focus that's when i'm going to go sky defocus it's going to defocus the sky a little bit and it's going to make it more believable and i think that the masking here is done really well again really impressed with how precise the masking is now the next thing i would do is probably just start adjusting the exposure on her and adding some contrast and things of that nature. But I'm going to try to use AI enhance again, and it does the job. It's crazy how that just turning that slider. Here's the before here is the after it looks good. Pretty amazing. Now there isn't check out this one. Y'all check out this one. This one was from Tokyo, uh, Japan. When I was there, I took this portrait completely gray sky, very boring, but there's a lot of it, right? How do I make this image more interesting? have an idea sky replacement <laughs> all right so now i'm gonna go ahead and replace this guy i want a sunset maybe let's try sunset two. Oh, okay you know what that looks good i like that let me try sunset four boom i like that one even more that literally before and after that took the image to the next level with one click and it's pretty amazing. And another cool thing about AI replacement is that you're able to load your own skies in here and you can put them in the image. The only thing I would do here, maybe defocus the sky a little bit, maybe relight the scene a little bit, um, make the sky temperature a little warmer, get that burning sunset. Cause obviously you can tell I love burning sunsets. Here's the before and here is the after. Took this image. She looks great. The pose is great. I took it to the next level inputting that sky. Look how sellable that is. Look at where the sun is. Look at the masking. It looks so real. In Luminar 4, there are tools to enhance your portraits. Now, here is the AI skin enhancer. This in no way is going to replace your professional retouching that you would do in Photoshop for like an hour, but this is going to give you very clean, basic tools to make someone's skin look better. So I'm going to go ahead and go to 50 on skin enhancer. And what I see it's happening here is that the skin is getting smoother. Let's see before and after before after. Now here is the portrait enhancer tab, red eye removal, eye whitening. We have eye whitening. I'm going to go ahead and raise that. Let's zoom into the eye. Let's check it out. Eye whitening. Oh, okay. Does act does a pretty good job. Eye enhancer. Oh, okay. Makes the eyes pop out a little bit more dark circles removal. People can really use that kind of like brightens up right under the eye. Um, enlarge eyes. Okay, these are cool, but you got to be very careful with these. You don't want to go too crazy with them. Depends on the kind of look you're going for. And we got teeth whitening, lip darkening. That's pretty cool. So a lot of different tools to enhance your portrait. Here's the before and after. Before and after. That is not bad for a quick and easy retouch on someone's skin where, you know, we don't want to go too crazy and in-depth editing in Photoshop. There are other features when you click the Pro tab. You have dodging and burning, you have split toning, advanced contrast, advanced gradient. Like there's a lot of tools in this software that you can use to edit your photos. For me, in my opinion, I love using this as a plugin. I don't want to change how I edit. And I know a lot of people don't want to change how they edit. I use Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom and you're able, the, the fact that I'm able to use this as a plugin to take an image, take it to Luminar, do my thing in Luminar with the AI tools, cause that's insane. Take it back to Photoshop, 
polish it up, do the final polish up in Photoshop, and I am good to go. Think about your shooting for a client. A lot of people don't care too much about fake skies or things of that nature. They would actually appreciate something in their image to make it just mind-blowingly good. Because when they post it on their Facebook and when they show their family and friends, it's gonna be like, wow, that looks amazing. I think that this is a powerful tool for anyone that's looking to add that extra pop to their images, whether you're taking children photos, family photos, portraits, it doesn't matter. That is how I would use Luminar 4 to take my images to the next level. Now, just imagine you on location taking pictures for a client and you want to absolutely wow them. Adding a fake sky, let's say the sky was really boring, adding a dramatic sky, believable, if done the right way, can just wow them and just elevate your work. I know I'm gonna be using this to give a little bit more pop to my environmental portraits. I think it's such a powerful, powerful tool, especially I'm all about speed. As literally just one extra step to my Photoshop and Lightroom workflow, I can just take it to Luminar, bring it back. It just, it adds that extra weapon in my arsenal to give my images the most wow factor, okay? Um, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully you can check check this out seriously it's really really dope the link will be down below to check out luminar 4 i genuinely i know this is a sponsored video genuinely though guys this is a very powerful tool i've been sending pictures to my friends showing them like look this is the before and this is after and just people are just their mouths are dropping because it's so freaking cool all right check it out down below see you in the next video